our today's topic of discussion is mutual funds. A mutual fund is a professionally managed investment fund that pools money from many investors to purchase securities. Mutual fund investors may be retail or institutional in nature. In India, mutual funds are regulated by SEBI, that is the regulator of the securities and commodity market owned by the government of India. Mutual funds have advantages and disadvantages compared to direct investing in individual securities as here the funds are pooled uh, from various investors to purchase securities. The securities can be equity, debt or derivatives, different types of different types of derivatives. So here there is the risk rate is higher comparatively but it is managed professionally so here you can have trust because it uh, includes the fiduciary authorities but considering it if i'll invest in individual securities uh, i may have different types of advantages and disadvantages there so let us look at the advantages in the mutual funds first it includes increased diversification a fund diversifies holding in many securities like it can be equity debt uh, the investment can be 50% in equity, 20% in debt, 20% in bond, 10% in derivative, different types of uh, preference shares. So it diversifies the risk. It helps in increasing economies of scale. It helps in diversification. That is the increased diversification in securities. If I'll invest my all 10,000 uh, amount of money in uh, equity. And if I don't get any return then or if I've invested the complete amount in debt and if I don't get the interest, so it helps to diversify so that at least if the 10% of my amount, for example, the 10% invested in preferences is lost or the 10% invested in debentures is lost, the company is not working well, I can have my 90% of the amount with me at a save because I have diversified the investment. So it reduces risk of any sort of loss. It helps different types of investment companies and individuals to participate in investments which were available only to large investors earlier. So now everyone can invest in mutual funds. Government oversight. Mutual funds are regulated by a governmental body. It leads to transparency and ease of comparison all mutual funds are required to report the same information to investors they can't uh, add their own stuff and provide the information there is no exaggeration they have to provide word-to-word -word information to us which makes them easier to compare to each other like we have different policies so we must know the pros and cons as it is it helps in increasing liquidity as the funds uh, the funds are diversified in different instruments. It creates liquidity in the market and professional management as they are professionally managed investment funds. However, there are some disadvantages like mutual funds are subjected to some fees, some sort of expenses. They are subjected to risk as well. Less control over the timing of recognition of gains we don't know when we'll get returns and less predictable income. Moving further, we have the working structure of mutual funds in India. So we have a sponsor, a fiduciary authority named trustees, a custodian, asset management company and RDA. So the sponsor will set up mutual fund and he has to put 40% of the net worth to set up mutual funds. So the, uh, the mutual fund is being set up, it is set up by a sponsor. Now the act a trustee which will ensure that the mutual funds regulate, uh, regulates as per the guidelines prescribed by government and SEBI. So he's the regulator, he, he looks after the working of uh, uh, mutual funds. Then comes into the picture custodian and asset management company both of them works together the custodian holds all the securities whereas the asset management company takes buying and selling decisions and appoints a fund manager rta here it is an agency which takes care of clerical work like processing all applications of the investors so this is how the mutual fund working take place in india 
Funds may also be categorized as index funds, which are passively managed funds that match the performance of an index or actively managed index funds. Primary structure of mutual funds are open-ended funds, unit investment funds, close-end funds, and exchange-traded funds, that is EDFs. Let us look at each one by one. First is open-end fund, mutual funds. Open-end mutual funds typically do not limit the number of shares they can offer and are bought and sold on demand. That is, they do not limit the number of shares which can be traded. When an investor invests in an open-end fund, the fund issues those shares which can be bought back by the fund. Next is close-end fund. It is a portfolio of pooled assets that raises a fixed amount of capital through an IPO, IPO that is initial public offering and then lists shares for trade on a stock exchange. Instead, like individual stock shares, the fund can only be bought and sold on the secondary market by investors. So in a close and mutual fund, what happens here, unlike your individual stock shares, the fund can be bought and sold on the secondary market that is there is no primary market exists here the very first point and the second point is it raises a pre-decided or fixed amount of capital through ipo and then the shares are listed on stock exchange for the trading purpose next is exchange traded fund it is a type of security that tracks an index sector commodity or other asset but which can be purchased or sold on a stock exchange just like your regular stock. So close end fund was not like a, your regular stock, but ETF is like a regular stock. It is a hybrid between uh, an open and mutual fund and ETF, which allows standard net asset based mutual fund to trade in real time on a stock exchange, similar to the trading of stock or ETF. So it is nothing but working of a open and mutual fund on a daily basis which can be purchased or sold on a stock exchange just like your regular stock but it is based on net asset value moving ahead we have classification of funds by types of underlying investments so mutual funds can be classified by the principal investments the four main categories are money market funds bond or fixed income funds next comes here is stock or equity funds and next comes here is hybrid funds so within these categories the funds may be subclassified by investment objective investment approach or specific focus so the classification has its own basis that is investment objective investment approach or specific focus bond stock and hybrid funds may be classified as either index that is passively managed funds or actively managed funds so hybrid funds these are the funds which invest both in bonds and securities or in convertible securities balance funds asset allocation funds target date or target risk funds and life cycle or life cycle lifestyle funds are all types of hybrid funds a type of mutual fund that invests in more than one asset class most often a combination of equity and debt assets and sometimes also include gold or even real estate when you invest in the combination of asset it is termed as hybrid funds Portfolio risk can be reduced by combining assets that have a low correlation. So it helps you greatly to reduce your portfolio risk. Next, we have a stock fund. With the name only, we can understand investing in stock or equity fund. A fund that invests in stock also called as equity shares or equity securities. Fund assets that are typically in stock with some amount of cash, which are generally quite small, as opposed to bonds, notes, or other securities. This may be a mutual fund or ETF. Bond funds are nothing but debt fund that invest in bonds or other debt securities. Bond funds are typically pay periodic dividends that include interest payments on the funds underlying securities plus periodic realized capital appreciation. So you have your interest in return, you have dividend and you have the actual amount invested. Money market funds are nothing but money investment in the money market instruments which base fixed income security with a very short time to maturity. Usually we have less than a year maturity here and a high 
credit quality. Investors often use money market funds as a substitute for bank savings accounts. Though money market funds are not insured by the government, unlike bank saving accounts which are insured. Moving ahead, we have pension fund. So in the financial uh, market, we have different types of securities and those securities we have one of the section that is pension fund. Pensions in India include various financial programs to support retirement in India. The major the components of Indian pension include civil servants pension, mandatory pension programs run by EPFO and unrecognized sector pension called NSAAP that is National Social Assistance Program. The state of Uttar Pradesh has implemented e-pension system which allows filing up of pension forms, checking, verification and payment using an online system. NPS is an attempt by the government to create a pensionized society in India. So, we'll know more about the national pension system of our India. So, national pension system is a voluntary defined combination of uh, pension system in India. Unlike, uh, it is just like PPF, that is Public Provident Fund and Employment Provident Fund. It is an exempt, exempt, exempt instrument in India where the entire corpus escapes tax at maturity. That is, you don't have to pay any sort of tax at the time of your maturity and the entire pension withdrawal amounts is tax free. It is administered and regulated by PFRDA that is Pension Fund Regulatory and Development Authority of India. It is considered as one of the best tax saving instruments after 40% of the corpus was made tax free at the time of maturity and it is ranked just below the ELSS that is Equity Link Savings Scheme. It is readily available and tax efficient under section 80 triple C and 80 CCT. Under NPS, an individual can contribute to his retirement account. Also, his employer can contribute to the welfare and social security of the individual. Investments in NPG is eligible for tax benefits as NPS is a market link annuity product. So it provides tax benefit of rupees. 150,000 under section 80 CCD. The additional amount is capped at 10% of basic salary under section 80 C, 80 triple C and 80 triple C and 80 double C D1. The entire amount is capped at 150,000. That is the maximum amount you can uh, avail tax benefit is 150,000. The civil service pension scheme is a is an unfunded defined benefit pay as you go scheme. Employers do not contribute while the respective employer pays 8.3% and the government adds 1.16% to qualify for a pension year. 10 years of service is must and the pensionable age must be 58. EPFO is nothing but a statutory body of government of India which administers a compulsory provident fund scheme, pension scheme and an insurance scheme. Provident fund is applicable for employees here across establishments that is private as well as government and they have different criteria of providing pension here in private and government institutions. Next we have national social assistance program which is a centrally sponsored scheme of the government of India which provides financial assistance to the elderly widows and persons with disabilities in the form of social pensions. So here is an example to you about NSAP, Old Age Pension Scheme, operated under Indira Gandhi National Old Age Pension Scheme. So Government Pension Scheme will look at it. Government Pension Scheme is nothing but uh, an initiative of Government of India, which is launched Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandan in February 2019 to provide an assured pension of rupees 3000 per month to unorganized workers in India. So it provides a social, it provides uh, the minimum amount of rupees 3000 to the small section of a society where the workers get pension on the basis of the efforts they lay in their job. So it is a social welfare scheme launched by Ministry of Labor and Employment of Government of India in February 2019 for poor laborers that is who get the amount of pension as per the efforts they lay in and the unorganized sector from minimum 18 years of age to maximum 40 years of age. It is also available to unorganized workers between 18 to 14 years of age. 
the monthly income of the worker should be below 15000 rupees the subscriber receives here a minimum assured pension of rupees 3000 per month attaining the age of 60 years however to benefit from the scheme workers have to contribute rupees 55 monthly for age of 18 and it varies according to age maximum contribution for a year cannot exceed rupees 2400 that is they have to contribute a minimum of rupees 200 per month to avail it that is the maximum amount for a year is 2400 but workers have to contribute contribute at least a rupees of 55 for the age of 18 and as the age increases the amount increases to 200 per month further if the subscriber dies the spouse of the beneficiary shall be entitled to receive 50% of the pension as family pension not whole pension 50% family pension is available only to spouse due to the erratic nature of the works of unorganized sector the exit provisions have been kept flexible that is whenever you don't you are not interested in the pension scheme you can exit it as such the subscriber can exit prematurely and the amount will be returned with interest at the saving bank account rate or the rate at which the fund earned income if the subscriber exists after 10 year period whichever is higher further the spouse has the option to continue the scheme and contribute to the subscriber's behalf to avail the scheme the concerned person has to visit community service center other and general bank account are necessary to avail pradhan mantri shram yogi mandan scheme so here are the questions for you name the participants of mutual fund structure in india second the government of india has launched launched dash scheme in february 2019 to provide an assured pension of rupees 3000 per month to unorganized workers do let me know answers in the comment section hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned for more such videos